Anamorphosis is a drawing technique that dates back to the 15th century. The first known artist to ever use it is Leonardo da Vinci. In Greek, anamorphous translates to render back into shape. Look at the skull at the bottom of the painting on the left. If you were to look at it in a mirror from a side angle, it would look like the image on the right. Anamorphosis is a drawing technique based on distortion and perspective. This is an anamorphic illusion. It's a floating sphere. This is the type of anamorphic illusion we'll be creating. An anamorphic illusion is when an artist creates an image that looks distorted unless you view it from a specific vantage point. The floating sphere we will create will look like this when we draw it. It will look like an oval. Then when we look at our drawing from a specific point of view, it will create the illusion of a floating sphere. Let me show you how we'll do this. Okay, we're gonna start creating this floating sphere by drawing an oval. And I'm going to give you some measurements to help you know about how large to make this. I'm going to make my oval approximately four inches long and two inches wide. So I'm setting up some waypoints for myself here so that I can connect the dots. I find it easier to connect dots than to freehand draw. But if you'd prefer to freehand draw an oval, please go ahead. Oval sketched in, I need to start thinking about value. And I need to imagine a light source and how that light source would affect the oval. So if I had a light source such as a lamp, casting light this direction onto the oval, the shadows, which would be a step five over here, the darkest value would be in this area, and the highlights, the white, would be over here. So I might just go ahead and start by reserving a highlight. So I'm gonna create an area that would be the highlight on this oval. Then I'm going to begin using my pencil to heavily shade in the darkest areas where no light would reach this sphere, or oval in this case. I'm gonna start by pressing as hard as I can, maintaining the oval shape, and as I get closer to the light source, I am relieving pressure on the pencil. So I'm pressing as hard as I can along the edge where the shadow would be, and I'm pressing lighter as I get towards the light source. Pressing heavily, pressing soft over here. I recommend using a regular pencil, one that could be sharpened in a pencil sharpener, as opposed to a mechanical pencil. And using a mechanical pencil, to shade in artwork, it takes a very long time. Now you can do this, it's completely up to you. This is going to be your drawing and you get to decide how much time you want to spend on it. But the surface area of a regular pencil, the lead on the point is much larger than that of a mechanical pencil. So the regular pencil that I'm using that can be sharpened in a pencil sharpener is going to be a lot faster and more effective. So it all depends on how much time you would like to spend on this. Okay, I'm going to go back, tidy things up a little bit. I'm using a round circular motion. If you recall, we've learned this before, it's called scumbling. I'm going to go back and redefine my edges a little bit polish them up, I'm thinking about my craftsmanship at this point. How can I make this look nicer and tidier? Where do I need to add some more shadows? Where do I need to erase some of my stray pencil marks? And then I can take my pinky and I can blend in 
if you would like to make things look a little bit smoother. We can change the texture of this oval. And that's up to you. These are all add-ons that you could do if you want. So you don't have to blend if you don't want to, and you don't have to use regular pencil if you don't want to, uh, but I recommend it. Okay, and a little reflected highlight here I'm going to add. I think that's a little bit fun. Now we need a shadow underneath our floating sphere a circular shadow just below and a little to the right because of our light source coming in press hard on the left side of the shadow and then gradually press lighter as you get towards the right of your shadow and then you can even drag and blend it a little bit over there Second step, cutting. So we're going to cut along the line that we drew behind the oval. Cut right along the line. So now I've cut out the top edge here as neatly as I could. time to enjoy all of our hard work. This is what my sphere looks like from a bird's eye view. I'm holding my phone camera directly above. Now I'm going to slowly change my angle. Imagine the sun setting. That's my camera right now. And I'm just about to get to the horizon line. And as I do, there it is. There's the floating sphere. It's all a matter of perspective. How cool is that? So play around with your camera angle a little bit and once you find that perfect angle right there, snap, take a photo.